uh, thanks for that. Um, so, uh, where do we start? Let's find this. Um, thanks for hanging around till the end, by the way. I'll try to keep you entertained or informed. Um, we'll start with the background, my background. Um, basically, going back to 1998, um, when I started the MSc course at the University of Northampton. Um, during that period, we are thinking about a dissertation subject, and I got very interested in firefighting lifts and the sort of purpose of evacuation. Uh, there was a lot of interest around that time over the, the use of lifts. Um, mainly, um, <coughs> codes started to change. Uh, the... Disabilities Act in 1981 introduced you know, the, the need to provide access in and around buildings for uh, disabled people. Uh, didn't really do it too successfully in regards uh, egress, but in 1985 the Part B building regs picked it up, uh, ran with it and made it a, a more success of it. We got BS 5588 Part 8, which is a means of escape for disabled persons, introduced and that's when we started to use uh, firefighting lifts to uh, allow for disabled people to evacuate from buildings. So that's where it really started. Uh, around that time there were a lot of uh, advocates <laughs> of the concept of using lifts but there were also critics. Uh, there's a lot of uh, symposiums being run in the States by NIST the Institute of Science and Technology, and they tended to be on the negative side. The uh, lifts are not safe to use. Uh, there was a lot of papers written. Uh, one, one such paper by a guy who's been mentioned earlier, uh, Albert So, uh, et al, a few others, uh, and, and they raised six major points of concern um, on the use of lifts. So I basically addressed those points of concern in a dissertation, which I did and completed in 2003. Uh, this, the, the points of concern were to do with machine failure, obvious things really, you know, uh, secondary power supplies, to do with water, uh, to do with obstruction of the fire service, um, to do with uh, inadequate operation of the lifts because they were never designed for that in the first place. Uh, and so on, and the, the, the most important really was the human behaviour side. Well, I sort of took that up and introduced the idea of using information fire warning systems on, uh, around lifts to uh, make the user lift, lifts a, a lot more of a possibility. So that, that's what I did in the dissertation. Uh, I then carried on some further studies in evacuation of tall buildings because there's more reasons why we need to evacuate people. It's not just disabled. It's maybe it's just disabled if you're talking low-rise buildings, but a high-rise building and very, very, very tall buildings, uh, people get tired, uh, fatigue, uh, injuries, just with uh, an evacuation, which is a test, <laughs> not even in a fire emergency. So th there's a need to try and assist that, and that's what a lot of the discussions were around that time. So that's really what led this. I guess what happened in WTC 1 and 2, World Trade Centre, uh, fueled a lot of this, this research. Um, I've attended other symposium on fire and human behaviour, uh, and that there is a drive towards finding better ways to get people out of buildings. So that really, uh, that really is what's driven this, uh, this move now, this paper. So, uh, what is the problem? Okay. Codes and standards. Currently, they don't advocate use of lifts for evacuation. That's the major problem. It's not the end of things because there are standards there to make lifts safe to use because we've got firefighting code standards. So, uh, building design is another problem. Uh, unless buildings are designed in such a way that the lifts are in a safe environment, then uh, this will never happen. So you can't really just pick up an old, uh, a bit, an existing building and use any lift that's in there and say, let's use it for evacuation. So building design is a different, and return on investment 
is, is also an issue because the, this is going to cost money. If we're going to use the list for evacuation, it'll cost more money and it'll probably take up more space out of the building, rentable space. So there's an issue there. Um, so um, basically the strategy of the building, whether it's a zonal uh, evacuation or a full evacuation, it's going to make a difference. How many people are in the building is going to make a difference. Um, obviously, we have to consider the uh, points of concern that I mentioned earlier, all of the design issues around making lifts safe to use. We have to consider that in amongst all of this. Um, okay. <laughs> and um, the design of the building, the design of the lifts, Structure, building services, architecture, everything's affected by it. And my, my experience is in, we've, we've run through this process a few times on a number of very tall buildings. Uh, unless you get sign off by the client, the design team, the building control authority, the fire engineers, it's never going to happen. So you really have to talk about it early. Um, it could be that, as in this situation here, these are... This example building here, there's a core of lifts there, there's a core of lifts here, cores to, and a core here. So there's, four, there's five cores going up vertical through this building uh, and two firefighting lifts attached to a firefighting stair. That's the, a standard arrangement in a building. And the fallback would be that we are getting disabled people out of this building in those lifts before the fire brigade arrive. Uh, are, are, are those lifts sufficient to move other people? Very, very unlikely. Maybe we need to take uh, this core uh, over as well, and then we have to design a fire protected core around the whole area. So we're expanding the, the cost and the problem. Maybe we need two cores, maybe there's two zones. Maybe the building has an office element and a hotel element, and we, we're treating them differently. Uh, maybe we even need to take everything and use everything and get people out of the building quickly. Uh, in which case we might need extra room ar around the core to refuge space and so forth. So th there is really the problem of, uh, that, we, that we face as designers to, to try and get this thing moving. Um, other people have faced the problem. Just now going to introduce four uh, buildings that uh, you all know of. <laughs> Uh, three of them have been uh, classed as world's tallest building. Uh, Petronas, the first one, completed in 1998, 452 metres high. Uh, it, it had uh, initially a stair evacuation from the upper levels uh, down to the bridge link at level 42 and across. They used the shuttle lifts in the other tower and vice versa. Um, this... This was only brought about by the very first trial evacuation, which took nearly three hours to, to empty the building, so they knew they had to do something. So this is when the bridge link became a reality, and, and this was the strategy. But the start of that strategy and the completion, 9-11, happened in between, and they decided then that they'd got to consider evacuation of both towers at the same time. So now the strategy is that they use... They walk down the stairs to here and they use the shuttles there. They've got extra, they've managed to add some extra design features to make that possible. Um, Tapai uh, completed 2004, 509 metres, another world tallest building in its day. Uh, again, only initial evacuation was stair. stair. Uh, trial evacuation using lifts and stairs reduced the evacuation time to, to less than 60 minutes. They decided to try it. The first trial was done without the lifts. Then they decided to try it with. So they realised they, 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 there was a great advantage. Uh, and the revised strategies was to use the lifts. And then they decided, well, how can we use the lifts? Because they weren't originally designed. Uh, so th they have uh, refuge areas uh, every eight floors. And they, they've uh, bulked up the service lifts to make the service lifts usable for e evacuation. So they've, they've done something that works for them. They may still need to be putting a lot of people down the stairs. We, we don't know fully how many people they can get out using this. Uh, Shanghai World Finance Centre, unfortunately, it, it didn't make world's tallest building. It was meant to, but uh, they got the plans wrong and it wasn't tall enough. 
They, they stopped at 492 metres, um, completed in 2007. They, they, the, the code is for refuge floors every 15 floors. They, they wanted to better that, so they have refuge floors every 12. Uh, and, and the refuge floors are designed for people to rest. That's all they're there for. They, they walk. If they need to rest, they can have a rest and then carry on the journey. That journey will probably be down the stairs. Um, the, the initial evacuation strategy, again, was just for disabled people. Revised the strategy was then to, to use additional lifts. The, the, there are not a great number of lifts, and there's no design being done to how many lifts they need to make this work. They've just taken a couple of lifts and said, if there's some people that can't carry on their journey, we'll let, we'll, we'll, they can use these lifts. So it, it, there's no number crunch in there as to, as to how many. Um, and the final one, the Burj, where, where there was some design done to use lifts for uh, evacuation. They've even, they've even printed numbers. Um, again, there's, there's refuge floors here. Um, they don't align to the, where the evacuation, the evacuation takes place from the transfer levels, 43, 76 and 1, 2, 3, which, which are not the refuge floors. So quite how it's linked together, I'm not sure. But you, see, you can see from this that they are uh, trying to uh, move towards evacuation using lifts in taller buildings. Uh, it's always, always going to make sense and it will happen one day. Um, so, just like the um, just like the nineties, when there was a drive towards uh, using lift for get disabled people out, that's now written and, and it happens everywhere. Um, everybody considers that fact. Now there's a drive towards getting everybody or most people out, or trying to uh, make a, a strategy work. So. Um, how, how does the design work? Um, so the process really is that we, we will sit down in a team with an architect and other engineers and, and design a building. They'll put a plan together what the building is going to look like. You know, we'll design, a VT engineer will design uh, the amount of lifts that are going to service that building properly. Uh, mechanical engineers will, will design elements, structural engineers elements, the whole thing comes together, uh, the concept gets signed off and you move on and design it properly. Uh, and we know we all know the process. So it's during that process when there needs to be uh, discussions. The, f the fire engineer will uh, produce an initial life safety strategy. It, there needs to be communication that that life safety strategy can include the lifts. So we have to give some information to them. They have to talk to the building control authority. They have to sort of feel an idea that, that it can be approved. And then we come back and affect the design. And the whole thing goes around um, until the concept is agreed. Um, then it could be that uh, we're going to use, as I showed previously, some of the lifts or all of the lifts. Um, it, it could be. Um, we need to perform calculations to show what percentage of the lifts will move a percentage of the people so that we can decide, you know, what is the safest way to evacuate this building. The, the example I gave in the uh, paper was uh, a, a building, a very tall building split by a sky lobby with shuttle lifts to the sky lobby. Uh, if, if you do the maths on getting people into a building, you'll always be able to get them out because it's a lot more efficient. So um, you do the calculations, it's only a two stop for a shuttle lift. So it's, it's basically, it's two journeys, it's two loads, two unloads, and there's your round trip time, your number of lifts. You know how many people you're shifting in what time. If you've got 100 people per floor, you know, you, you know you can move four floors in five minutes and the whole thing comes together. Um, the, it's likely that a modern building will be compartmentalised or try and stop the spread of smoke. So um, in, in doing that, uh, that, that almost means they're going to evacuate a zone. They might evacuate four floors at a time. We, we've got 100 people per floor. We've got 400 people. They all go to, out, over to the lifts. The lifts are protected and, and they're out. So the, the whole concept works. It's just that it has to be um, 
it has to be designed to, to, to make it possible. And so I guess, um, what do we have to do? So it is a, another, uh, our typical, uh, another typical building uh, plan, elevation, lifts going through, sky lobby, and, and so on. We, we must, um, we must protect the lift shaft. W whatever we do, if we're going to use lifts for evacuation, they must be in a protected core. So unless they're designed originally in that fire core, a lot of modern buildings, they want open plan, uh, especially from transfer floors, they're open plan out into the building and away. So they, they have to be, the architect has to give up that freedom and put doors there. That's a start. I worked on a building where the doors were 2.8 metre high glass, a whole glass uh, uh, door and an entry level, uh, but it was still it still went through. Uh, you keep you keep the glass safe by dripping water over it while the fire's the other side. Uh, we, we, we did the, the, water, the lifts are designed the same way with a step or with with a trough, to you know designed for protection of water. And you you can still have a design that works. Um, obviously, there has to be evacuation stairs linked to it as there is with every other protect, fire protected core there has to be stairs linked and that's not a difficult thing to design uh, and, and sufficient refuge space for the number of people if you're evacuating four floors at a time and you've got a thousand people 250 people per floor if you've got a thousand people arriving you must have a refuge space for a thousand people and that's not hard to calculate either uh, that's hence hence when i, I showed uh, an area around the core uh, uh, people could walk down the stairs and walk around the core and uh, that whole area, the stair core is refuge and around could be refuge. There's, there's all different way, way, ways of doing it. In China, they have so many refuge floors anyway. You've got people, uh, safe people, places for people to go. Tall buildings have mechanical floors. So the mechanical floor uh, in around that area is ideal. So um, building services, sorry. Built building services, obviously we know the things there, the secondary pow power, water prevention, fire alarm. It may be that we need pressurisation. My friend, information fire warning systems. I, I just want to explain information fire warning systems really because um, this is the sort of thing you'd encounter on the, on the underground, I guess, where you have a sign that says uh, there's a lift leaving now, the next lift will be arriving in 30 seconds, the next lift is two minutes after that or one minute after that. So, or you are now, you know, uh, 25 seconds away from boarding a lift and in, in where you are along the, the route, uh, the, the whole thing is done to uh, control human behaviour. Human behaviour might be to panic. It isn't. People only panic when they are starved of information. You give people information, they won't panic. So the whole thing is done about that. The process needs to be managed. You, you can't have the lifts working on automatic, they have to be on manual. Man management control, uh, so that uh, people in the building have, have been trained to uh, get, you know, to operate the lifts. The lifts all ground, the management take over a number of them on evacuation control, they go up to the sky lobby, they load people into the lift, they take them out, they go back, get more people in the lift and take them out. There's other wardens at the sky lobby. The whole process has to be managed and it does have to be in a safe environment, uh, but it is possible. Um, so where, where do we go? Uh, the use of lifts to assist either full or partial evacuation is possible, but it depends on early cooperation with the client, uh, with architect and design engineers. Um, there'll always be sufficient lifts in a building to evacuate. It, you know, you, you design lifts to get people into a building. There's always sufficient there. Question is, how many of them do you need to get the people out of the building and how much are you prepared to pay to do that? There will be a cost one way or the other, so it has to be sign off. Uh, there are a number of buildings that we have underway that are being constructed now and another f that are in the design process that have got um, lifts for evacuation. So it is happening and hopefully there'll be a future uh, paper that will be a case study of a building where, where it has happened. So, thank you.